So starting in the accelerator in Jarvis, uh, ourselves, we had a view that India was lacking in providing the support and network for young entrepreneurs. We wanted to bring an open platform into India where anyone from a village to a IIT graduate can come in and explore uh, what they want to build. Focusing on Indian startups and helping them to grow has been uh, probably a bit more challenging than uh, what we initially thought and uh, challenging in a way that it's a young community overall even if you look at the uh, office environment average age is 26 if you go into a startup i think most people haven't really worked in a job before they decided to quit and then go into a startup so some of the fundamentals of running a business uh, a corporate environment and all of those sort of uh, hygiene factors are not uh, pre-existent in the startup. So, so you have to really start from grassroots. It's an absolute ground up. First, people need to understand why do the business, what does it take, what is the compliance, how to register, why should you have a domain name before you decide on a name. Those kind of things are, are sort of, uh, uh, I guess, not something that we expected that we would go down to that level. So in India, for instance, a startup comes in and you know does a, a platform, launches it, and gets fifty thousand downloads in the first three months. Let's say that's entirely conceivable and it is achievable, and most people do it. So, but the context of that success and whether the platform is accepted, whether that actually means that they are going to, you know, just exponentially grow from there becomes a, a very very different sort of uh, challenge mm -hmm. compared to uh, I guess a startup in Australia or Hong Kong or um, US and all where it's it's not like um, explosion in the first three months and then crunch mm -hmm. it's crunch from day one and then you're incrementally going so all of that uh, success or failure metrics is more organic mm -hmm. so you can plan better in a sense you know what cost of acquisition of each customer is how do you actually plan for success as well right while as um, India I do find is it it can go the other way where somebody sort of thinks hey we, we, we made it already but they haven't really planned for that success and they don't know how to get from thirty thousand dollars to three hundred to three million and so on because it's an entirely different ballgame. Startups get bashed around mostly for valuations, for fun almost, <laughs> right? Because it's a topical. But think about it from a perspective that an industry where one or two players will take on the entire market. Now, if you compare that to even the conglomerates in India like Tata, Reliance and all that, None of them can take the entire market. There is still plenty for people to play and there will be a billion dollar enterprise, $500 million enterprise and so on and so forth. But you cannot have a Google and sitting next to it is a company's 80% of its size. Mm. You won't have it. So in the tech world, it's winner takes all and maximum you have two winners. Yes, you're going to lose rest of the time, but when you win big, that multiple is not wrong. So that context is not being, you know, factored into the thought process of valuations. Uh, if you look at the Indian startup, for instance, when they raise investment and they're talking to five investors, let's say, uh, term sheets are signed, generally people will start celebrating that, okay, we are all done. But I always explain to them that, hey, uh, term sheets are signed. By the time you get the, even the remittance from an investor, if KYC does not pass in India, the money will go back. Now, those are the kind of nitty gritty which are very important to their business. So, the nature of running a business is pretty much what a startup needs to grapple with. So, nature of running a business in the US, Hong Kong and India is obviously very different. Running a shop here is different if you are in retail and some of the things like um, you know a startup could start thinking hey I've got an online e-commerce platform and I'm gonna buy a bunch of goods and start selling it all of a sudden they get foreign investment in and they got to rethink the whole business model that hey uh, you're a foreign investment uh, X percent you can't actually do that so 
it's, it's far more complex mm -hmm. to say it simply but definitely one size does not fit all and especially even in India when you go from north to south treat it as a different region different country altogether. go east